Hey, what's up, Speak of Files? Willington here. This video has taken some time to put together, but we are finally here. Okay, so what did I do? I took drivers out of the JBL Flip and added them to the JBL Charge 4 to turn it into the Charge 4 Flip if that makes any sense. Um, anyway, so for this video, I'm going to be showing you the whole process of what I went through and what I ended up with, um, but also let you listen to a Judge 4 with three drivers in comparison to the original JBL Charge 4 that has not been modified at all. So this should be an interesting video. I had fun making it and well, let's get into it. My first idea was to go to a hardware store, pick out some real hardwood, cut out a piece, stick my drivers to that hardwood piece that I cut out and stick that into the JBL Charge 4 and bam, all done. But that did not work. Turns out it's really hard for an amateur like me to cut a precise piece um, without the right tool and skills. So it didn't look very pretty. So I ended up scrapping that idea for something else. I took some measurements, opened up Cinema 4D and started designing something that might look better than what I had done with wood. After deciding on my design, which wasn't really complicated, I sent that out to be 3D printed. I wasn't very confident with what was gonna come back when the prints came back to me. Um, because this was my first time doing a 3D print, ordering a 3D print online, but also because I was having some issues with the measurements when I put it in the website, like my measurements will be right in Cinema 4D, but when I upload my design to the website, it would be off a little bit. So I just crossed my fingers, ordered the print, and sure enough, after about two weeks, the prints came in, and they looked awesome, white. Um, I had my DLX logo right on there. It looked kind of goofy, but it was there. Um, I wasn't very concerned about that. But when I put everything together, it was not fitting. This lip at the back here wasn't wide enough to cover the hole it's supposed to, and the overall body of the print was just a little too big to fit through the hole. That's what she said. So I ended up going back into Cinema 4D, did a little bit of changes to the design, and placed the order again. And this time, again, after about two weeks of waiting, they came in looking all nice and pretty, and as you can see, I decided to order them in black so they can match the color of the Charge 4 that I'm trying to add them to. And my logo is still kind of messed up on here, but whatever. Everything mostly fit perfectly except for two things. The outer flange was a little too big, but that was an easy fix. I just got a utility knife and carefully shaved some material off and I ended up with a perfect fit. The only other difficulty I had was trying to fit everything into the JBL Charge 4. It wouldn't snap in place because there was too much material for the PR enclosure to snap into where it's supposed to. So I ended up shaving some rubber off this piece that used to hold the PRs and that fixed the problem. And now that everything fit perfectly, Perfectly, the next part was to take my drivers that I got out of the JBL Flip and install them into my 3D printed models. I had to line the speaker up into the model, pre-drill some holes for the screws, and during the pre-drilling I ended up going a little too far, which was not cool. I made a little hole into one of my models. Not cool. So to prevent this, I had to kind of mark how far I need to go in with the drill bit in order to prevent this from happening again. And this worked out pretty good. I'm not sure why I didn't do that in the first place. The whole thing didn't take that long and I had all my speakers secured where they're supposed to be. And they were also looking pretty nice. Like they belong there. Okay, so can you guys guess what this is? 
or where it's from? This here is a speaker assembly from a 50 inch LG TV that I took apart to recycle and I kept these for a different project I was working on. But I decided to steal the wires off of it just because they had those snapping connections that I thought would make it easy to snap things together into the charge for when putting everything together. So I cut the wires off took off the ones that were on the drivers originally and replaced them with ones from the TV assembly and now I have drivers with snaps that I can use. The next part here was to open up the charge 4 by removing its driver so I can get access to the wiring to connect my new drivers to it. So after figuring out my positives and negatives, I connected my wires from the new drivers to the ones coming out of the JBL Charge 4. And for added security and clean connection, I soldered them in place. I'm not very good at soldering, but I think I achieved my goal. But before putting everything together, I connected all the drivers and turned the speaker on to make sure everything works before sealing everything up. Ice cubes on my neck, stay where the money at, in the back, count the stacks, new bands, I'm buying that. And yeah, everything worked as I expected it to, and now it's time to run wires through the speaker and fasten the main driver back in place. And before someone goes ahead and types and points it out, I know my dust cap on the driver is dented, but I honestly don't know when it happened or how it happened, but the speaker has been open there, so I could have pressed it somehow without realizing it. Uh, but that should not affect the performance of the speaker. So I'm not worried about it, but I know it's there, I see it. You don't have to point it out. So with my main driver back in, all I have to do is drop the new drivers into the charge for PR housing, connect the wires, and then the PR housing back into the JBL charge for body, and everything looks good, great, clean and ready to go. I turned it on to test and everything still worked fine. So I put the screws back in and covered everything up. And now what we have is a very familiar JBL Charge 4, but with three drivers. There's one there, one here, and a giant one right here. You know, it's still mono, but I would say it's very close to a 360 sound. I call it the Charge 4 Flip, you know, because it has drivers from the JBL Flip. Who turned off my speaker? It's supposed to be looking nice and pretty over there. There we go. Right here, I do have another JBL Charge 4 that I have never modified, I've never opened this one actually. So this is what it sounds like from the store, okay? So we're going to be comparing the unmodified JBL Charge 4 to my JBL Charge 4 Flip, the modified Charge 4 right here. Um, we'll talk about the sound on the other side after you guys hear the sound sample. Um, the sound sample, as usual, is recording using a high quality binaural microphone. So for the best experience, please use headphones. With that said, let's hear the speaker speak. I've had enough of this day, it seems to me that Like I missed the 
have it now before I tell you guys what I think it sounds like I'd like to know what you think it sounds like in comparison to the JBL charge for that's any modified like I want to know what you thought before hearing the sound sample and what you think after hearing the sound sample were you surprised at all let me know in the comment section down there I'd like to really know Okay, so the modified Charge 4 is definitely louder. I feel like it sounds like an outdoor mode of the JBL Charge 4 if it had one. Um, it, it gets louder but cuts down on bass, which is basically what all speakers that have the outdoor mode do. And the highs on the modified Charge 4 are a little bit better for me. Um, not always and not by a lot, but I feel like they have a little bit more texture in their sound in comparison to the original JBL Charge 4. The mids and vocals are also a little bit better on the JBL Charge 4 Flip the modified speaker and you can clearly hear this in the samples with vocals but when it comes to bass performance the original JBL Charge 4 is still in the lead here um, I was kind of still anticipating that like I didn't think the modified speaker is gonna be better at bass performance but I feel like the gap is more of what I was not expecting. I feel like the gap is a little bit bigger than I was expecting. I thought this would do a little bit better than it's doing right now. Um, so yes, it turns out the passive radiators are a very, very big part of best performance. Okay, so am I happy with the final outcome of my JBL Charge 4 Flip? Mostly, yes. I honestly wish it sounded a little bit better than it does right now because I feel like the JBL Charge 4 original is somehow a little bit cleaner and more controlled than my modified JBL Charge 4. Um, but also, if you... Okay, here's a sample of the, J the speakers playing at lower 30% volume. The Charge 4 that I modified sounds a little bit distorted, quite a bit actually. Did you hear that? 
So it, it makes it hard to listen to bass heavy songs at lower volumes. And when I looked into it, it turns out um, the left speaker right here is the one that's um, causing all the distortions. Um, I thought about changing it out and putting something else in, in there, but I don't really feel like going through all of that. I'm not sure if it just got burnt um, because this is a, the wattage, the wattage that, how do I say that? The watts that are coming out of the JBL Charge 4 that is pumping out are closer to 30. Um, well, as the two the speakers are ready for five watts each, the smaller ones here. So, if there's a small surge that goes first to the speaker here, I feel like it's gonna damage it. I'm not sure if that's what actually happened, or the speaker was just bad because the JBL flip that I turned into these that I took the drivers out of was not working in the first place. Um, I've had it for um, a long time and it it, it didn't work which is why I decided to take the drivers out of it. But I don't remember if the drivers, the driver was just bad or the wattage is coming out of the JBL Charge 4 broke it. So I could replace it and put a new one there, but I don't wanna do that. I think I'm gonna leave that up to whoever wins the speaker right here because yes, when we hit 50 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving it away. So I'm hoping someone can put this speaker to use out there. It's a very unique speaker. You would be the only one who has it and you can do whatever the hell you want with it. You know, if you take them out and replace it with something else, I don't know. Um, also, I do know you guys, when I did the video where I took out the passive radiators, out of the JBL Charge 4 right here, I asked for um, what you guys wanted me to do, some sort of DI fix up, you know, of the passive radiator. And a lot of you recommended a few things. One of them was, well, this. And a lot of you also wanted me to put um, rubber band, I mean, not rubber band, <laughs> a balloon and cover that with a balloon and see how that turns out. And yes, I'm working on that video, but it probably won't be on the charge for here. Um, I might do it on there, but I also might do it on the JBL Extreme too. I don't know, something like that. But I'm working on that video. I'm not sure when it'll be coming out. So make sure you're subscribed so you can see that video. Um, also, I wanna say thank you. This was very fun making. I'm not sure if you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did, leave it a like and let me know in the comment section below. Let's like this video more than all the other ones. And please, if you're here and you haven't yet subscribed too, please do that. It does help out. Um, I'll leave the links to the speakers well, the JBL Charge 4 in the description section down there and a few other links, please check them out. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video again and please subscribe if you're new here. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.